In this video, we're going to have a look at ordering and comparing whole numbers as well as rounding. When ordering numbers, you can either order them from smallest to biggest, which is increasing order, or from biggest to smallest, which is decreasing order. Example, place the following numbers in increasing order. This means we'll have to start with the smallest number, and that will be 3. Next, we'll have to look at the tens. We have 14 and 19, which will mean that we'll have 14 next and then 19. In the 20s, we have 21 and 28, which is already in increasing order. Now we're left with 30 and 33. So once we've added the 30 and the 33, the numbers are in increasing order. When we compare values, we will say that the one is bigger than, or smaller than the other, or even equal to. For bigger than and smaller than, we use the inequality sign. This sign can be read in both directions, and that is why you need to know that the open part of the sign always shows the bigger value. For example, we can say that 3 is bigger than 1 but we can choose to read from right to left and now the closed part of our sign is showing the 1 which says 1 is smaller than 3. We could have also chosen to write this as 1 is smaller than 3 and again if we chose to read this from right to left the open part of our sign is showing that 3 is bigger than 1. Example, are the following statements true or false? Here we now make use of two inequality signs. Firstly, it says that 1 is smaller than 5, and this is true. Next, it says that 1 and 5 are both smaller than 10, and this is also true. So the whole statement is true. In the second one, firstly it says that 2 is smaller than 20, and that once again is true. But now it says that both 2 and 20 are smaller than 13. Remember that the open side of the inequality sign indicates the larger value, and 13 is not bigger than 20, so this statement is false. Complete the statement by adding the correct sign in the middle. In number 1, we are comparing 6 with 60, and 60 is definitely the bigger of the two numbers. So in this case, we can use the inequality sign smaller than, because 6 is smaller than 60. In number 2, we now also test whether you know the order of calculations. On the left-hand side, we have addition and multiplication. So here we first need to multiply. That will give us 3 plus 20 and that value is 23. On the right hand side we have division and subtraction so we are going to divide first. 34 divided by 2 is 17 minus the 2 will give us 15. And now we can add the correct sign. 23 is bigger than 15, and that is why the open part of the inequality sign will be in the direction of the 23. In number 3, we once again need to make sure that we do the correct order of calculations. So first, we need to simplify the bracket, which will give us 5. That now needs to be multiplied by 8 to give a value of 40. On the right, we only have addition, so 20 plus 20 will give a value of 40. And in this statement, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. In number 4, on the left we have 5 minus 5, which is 0, and on the right we have 5 divided by 5, and anything divided by itself is 1. So here, the left-hand side is smaller than the right-hand side. 
Sometimes in mathematics, we want to round a number. For that, we focus on specific digits. We can have a look at the units, the tens, the hundreds, and so forth to the left. Or we can focus on the decimals, the first decimal, second decimal, third decimal on the right. In the first example, we are asked to round off to the nearest hundred. So here we focus on 582 and we need to determine whether it lies closer to 500 or to 600. 582 lies closer to 600, which means this value can be rounded to 14,600. You can always think about the value, just like we just did, or you can follow a simple rule. When rounding, we focus on the digit to the right of the digit that should be rounded. This value shows us whether, in our case, the value is closer to 500 or closer to 600. When this digit to the right of the one we need to round is anything less than 5, so 4, 3, 2, 1 or 0, the digit we round will stay the same. But if the digit to the right is 5 or bigger, it means that the digit we need to round has to increase with 1. In our example, the digit to the right of the one we need to round was an 8, which means our digit of 5 had to increase by 1, and that is why we rounded to 14,600. In our second question, we need to round to the nearest two decimal places. And the second decimal in this case is a 5. If we now focus on the decimal to the right of that, you can see that it is a 2, which means that our second decimal has to stay constant and the rounded value will be 2, 3, 5. Remember that once again you could also simply choose to look at the two values of 52 and decide whether it lies closer to 50 or to 60. In this case, it lies closer to 50 and that is why our decimal stayed a 5. In the third example, we need to round to the nearest first decimal place and that is why we focus on the second decimal, which is a 9. Because this value is a 9, the digit in front of it should increase with 1. But this is a 9 already, and when I increase, it will become 10, which means the 6 should also increase, and this will give us a rounded value of minus 7. Or again, you could choose to simply have a look at the two values and determine whether 99 is closer to 90, or closer to 100. In this case, it is definitely closer to 100, which means our 600 now became 700. That is why we rounded to minus 7.